Hi, my name is Kay, and uh, I'm in the U.S. Army Special Forces. I thought I'd give you a quick overview of my everyday kit or a go-to kit, uh, especially during training. Um, so I'll go ahead and start with my helmet, just kind of things I like to run. Um, so standard ops core, standard issue, nothing too crazy. Uh, this is the newest model, the SF Fast. Um, we'll kind of start from the top. So um, obviously we have PVS 31s uh, that we run. Uh, it's issued for us with the uh, Wilcox mount. And then going into the headsets, uh, the ops core uh, castle comms. Are, um, probably staring issue for us, so pretty much all of us are rocking this. Um, uh, I'd like to mention though the uh, I like to have a lot of retention for my battery pack for my 30 ones. Um, and then I also have uh, an extension cable for a thermal clip-on, which I like to use here and there. And then obviously an IR light uh, in case we use uh, an IR light for something. Um, not too much on the helmet. I like to put too, too much stuff on. Um, I like to make sure everything's can pretty tight inside, not a lot of movement. I don't want any movement in my helmet actually. Um, and then kind of have a weighted balance. Uh, kind of helps out a little bit. Um, not too much to it, not a lot of crazy stuff. Um, one thing I do not have on here is I usually have a light um, in case I need it for later or need to look at stuff. Uh, next thing we move on to is my body armor. Uh, so kind of go through like an everyday kind of, kind of fun. I like to keep it simple, not a lot of crazy stuff going on. Uh, so right here I have the Spiritus kit and uh, we'll work our way down. I usually keep my ATAC mount up with my phone. Um, I don't use my ATAC too much, uh, but when I do, uh, it's pretty little high, but not a big deal. Some guys like to run it a little bit down low. Uh, I just like to run it here. Um, obviously, we have our PPT that goes to the castle comms, uh, and I like to route two wires, which I think is great on a Spiritus kit because it's got a lot of wire management. Uh, I run a Disco 32 uh, reroute for uh, just a smaller antenna, and if I need a bigger antenna, I'll usually attach that as well. I also run a man wire. Um, as well, just to give two options for antennas. <clears throat> uh, coming down, running the Mark V from Spiritus, just three mags up front, nothing crazy. I don't like too much space coming out, especially uh, in around vehicles. It's hard for me to get in and out, so not a big deal. Right in front of the Mark V, uh, I just have a uh, zip-on pouch that my Charlie made for us. It's pretty cool. He's really good at sewing. And then he made us a little shotgun, shotgun retainer placard. Uh, just from at his house. That's pretty cool. So uh, I usually put my phone in here uh, for shotgun rounds. If I'm going to run a shotgun on my right side for breaching. Uh, and then <laughs> to be honest with you, this pouch, I usually use my, put my phone in here all the time. Uh, that's not my ATAC. Or I keep rubber bands, uh, etc. Working our way down, uh, just running a Spiritus pouch. Um, I usually keep tools, etc. inside of this pouch. Um, or other rubber bands, stuff I would use for breaching. Um, open up to the cummerband. So I'll switch between the tubes or I'll switch between the elastic cummerband. Um, if I want a lot of tension and not a lot of movement in my kit, I want to move to my elastic cummerband because it keeps my kit on my body pretty well. Um, uh, then I run just one of the wing expanders for my 152 radio. Uh, connects pretty good. And then when I use the elastic cummerbands and it's going around my waist, it keeps that radio in pretty well. So it's not too bad. Uh, working to the rear, like I said, keeping it simple. Uh, just running a general purpose pouch uh, for the guys in the back and some flashbang pouches uh, to keep some flashbangs. Uh, general purpose, usually uh, maybe some extra breaching stuff, etc., or pending whatever mission we're doing, uh, whatever the loadout plan they come up with, they need a little bit extra of. Um, I have multiple um, backs that I use. Um, if I'm going to be doing some heavy breaching, then I'll wear a different panel where I can carry other things. Um, so it's just a baseline streamline, nice and skinny. Like I said earlier, in inside, going in and out of vehicles, you don't want too much front and back. So this minimizes everything. I still fit in the vehicle and not have any problems. Uh, it's pretty much on the kit. Uh, nothing crazy. Just like to keep it simple. I like to know where everything's at. Um, Biggest thing, right side, that's, I'm right-handed, so I shoot pistol. I like to keep it completely clean, so I just have that fast transition to my pistol. Uh, I have nothing in the way. I gotta make uh, any movements that may um, slow my speed on that pistol draw. So working over to our rifle, I'll just kind of cover my rifle real fast. Uh, same thing, I like to keep it simple. Not a lot of crazy stuff going on in this rifle. Um, so we'll work away from the, the front to the back. Um, so we have suppressors, you know, 
depending on what's going on, I'm running a suppressor. Uh, in a house, I'm running a suppressor. On a bear, I'm running a suppressor. Um, just because of the uh, TBI issues that's been coming out lately. Um, as you can see, the laser, uh, PVS, uh, sorry, the uh, LA-23. Um, some guys like to use a hot button, etc. I just use my thumb right on the button. I feel it right there, especially on a shorty barrel. It's a 10 and a half inch. Uh, so I just use that thumb to push that button. And then on the bottom right side for my Surefire light, I just use my two fingers right here off of my front mount to uh, engage my light. So re real easy. I'm not running a dual because sometimes I get confused on the front and back, which is laser, which is a light. These are easy, identifiable. And if I want to stay off that light, I'll just move those fingers off or switch my light to off. Uh, I've just got a quick pop-up front sight right here. Uh, it's a quick, uh, just in case something goes wrong with my red dot, I'll just pop that up in the rear sight. Uh, just running a high-rise mount and then running just an easy red dot, nothing crazy. Um, I like the high-rise mount, especially in, during uh, CQB types of stuff. Um, with my PVS 31s on this high-rise mount, I can literally see like it is the daytime. I'm not bringing my head super down into my gun with my goggles just to see what's going on in the target. I just bring it up to my head and pull the trigger if I have a target. Um, pretty standard issue. We all have Geisley uh, um, charging handles and then a Geisley trigger. Um, and then I like to keep a little bit of a cheek well. So right here on the buttstock, just running the Magpul. Um, I don't like to run the standard one just because I like to get my cheek at the same place every single time and I feel like this little kind of V cut out right here. It just gives me exactly what I need. Um, coming on the uh, grip, I run an Egro grip because it's got a little push out to the finger. It allows me good finger control on my trigger. And uh, if I'm taking a, a really tough shot, I have more control of that trigger. Um, as for a sling, uh, I used to run VTAC. The only problem I had is uh, it would have this extra excess of the sling outside and always get in the way. So. Having no excess, pushing it out just made things a lot simpler, a lot easier. And then, as you can see, I just attached them with two key rings. Um, and then I like to keep it a little bit closer um, just so I can maneuver that gun quickly. Um, I don't like to keep this far out because it gets away of my hands when I'm trying to go to my workspace or do certain things. So now we'll go ahead and work our way to my belt. Nothing super crazy on my belt. Um, so I'm running a sub-second belt. I uh, actually uh, went to the Q course with this guy. He's a good friend. Uh, so this belt works really good. Uh, I got one of his original belts, and then now he's definitely upgraded his belt. I uh, like it a lot. So just working our way from the, uh, the left to the right. All right, so first we'll start off with the Cobra buckle. I like the Cobra buckle. It's real easy, real simple. Plugs in, let's go. And then I got the inner Velcro, and then I wear the inner belt. Um, so I got a good contact and not a lot of movement in my belt. Um, do you got a quick helo lantern, just a quick release. In case we're going on a helo, I can quickly hook up to the helo, not worry about anything. Uh, a little glove retention holder, it's pretty cool. Carry my gloves, I don't always wear my gloves at all times, so it's good to keep them close. Um, I run my pistol at a 40, uh, a little bit different than some people. It's just what I like. I get a lot of speed and I kind of put this one magazine backwards. And then for my secondary pistol, uh, just kind of up and down, going for that second. Uh, as for my rifle, I run a Gista from Spiritus uh, with my PMAG. I think it's awesome because one, I got pretty good retention on my magazine, and then two, I can keep extra stuff here, um, just like uh, chem lights or whatever I need for that day. Normally I hang my chem lights on my belt, but uh, sometimes I just put them in this pouch. Keeps it simple every single time. Uh, the most important thing out of a belt is the dump pouch. Uh, easy, it kind of folds up. I think this is an issued one, can't remember, uh, but it's pretty good. Over here, I'm running just a small wild tactical uh, med pouch. Uh, I've stuffed pretty much the minimum the Delta lets me all into one pouch. Uh, then I'll carry some more inside of my uh, front pouch on my kit. <clears throat> I'm working away. I made a little like homemade magnet for my shotgun if I'm gonna wear a shotgun. This uh, magnet is super strong. I think I got it from Home Depot and it actually works pretty well. Um, usually I just keep that mag that I'm gonna load in my pistol right there if I'm not running a shotgun. Um, that way I can just quickly load in my pistol and move from there. Um, right behind my uh, Safari Land holster, I just got the uh, Sock P knife. Nothing crazy. Um, Sock P knife allows you to um, 
use a knife and hold your gun at the same time. Uh, it takes a lot of practice, but also you can just use it as a regular knife. I didn't want a too big of a knife on my belt, just something I can get to quickly on my right hand side and use it if I needed to. Work away to the end of the pistol belt, just a Fireland holster. Uh, I'm either running a Glock or an M17, um, but I like the M17 a lot, so I've kind of been running that a lot lately. And uh, so we'll kind of talk about what I'm doing on my M17. Um, nothing crazy. Um, so I took the M17, just added a few things to it, um, just to make it better to what I liked. Uh, originally the M17 came to us, I didn't like it at all. Uh, I saw a buddy running a Legion one day at just a regular range and I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. So I kind of try to mimic that on my M17. Uh, so the only change I made on my M17 is I added a red dot, uh, Surefire 300 uh, with the R adaption, obviously. Um, a different grip module um, and then just a flare magazine well. And then inside of my uh, magazine well I added a uh, magnesium bar just to give it a little bit more balance on the weight. So nothing crazy. Uh, it's a good pistol. It's a good time. Yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, just a basic setup. I like to keep things simple, easy, uh, lots of retention, and uh, not too much stuff. I don't like to carry anything I don't need, and I'll only add stuff that's required for whatever we're doing on different things. Hey, thanks for watching.